Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, back with another crypto video, and I bought a lot more XRP. And now I could just end the video right there without telling you guys why I did that, what I've been thinking, what I've been doing, but no. In this video, I'm gonna try to explain a couple of Ripple XRP things to y'all and also explain what I've been doing over the past couple of weeks here, what my thoughts have been, why I've been buying, why I'm not afraid and everything like that. So hopefully you guys watch this whole video so you know everything, but also guys, make sure that you enter the $500 giveaway that we're doing by the end of this month. All you have to do is make sure you press the like button on every video. So just start with this one, press the like button on this video and put a comma down below. What you're then doing for yourself is making sure you have one entry into the giveaway. And for every single video that I post, you have another entry. So if you have the notification bell on, you make sure that you do not miss a single video that I post and make sure you keep pressing the like button and commenting something on all of them. Cause at the end of the month, we're just gonna grab a list of all the people who commented and look only for unique ones per video and then pick maybe one maybe five maybe ten winners in total to share this prize so make sure you enter that giveaway now guys whenever we're talking about the price of xrp there's a lot of things that instantly come to mind but mostly what i'm thinking about here is how can i optimize my strategy to have the most amount of xrp slash dollar value xrp in the future and now if you want some more tips on just how to make money on the internet and, and things like that, make sure you follow my second channel. It's called Dusty. There's a link for it on my normal Dusty BC channel. Also, a link for it is in the description below. Because here I'm going to be doing some videos on normal finance, not necessarily crypto, but really something that a lot of you would like, I'm thinking. So, what I thought about, right, is what points should you buy XRP at? And... It's always a difficult question to ask. Since this is not financial advice, it is purely for entertainment purposes only, but it concerns financial matters, even though they're only my own. Now, what goes through my mind every time that I'm thinking about buying more XRP? Let's say I just got my paycheck. Let's say we're just estimating my this paycheck, you know, said paycheck to be, um, let's say $1,000, all right? Let's say a paycheck is $1,000 and you're deciding to invest it into the crypto market, let's say XRP. Now, what the problem slash idea is then is that right now you want to buy the maximum amount of XRP, most likely as soon as possible, so you can reap the benefits of said investment in the future. What the problem is, though, is that it's very difficult, at least I see that often, that it's very difficult for people to time the market and for them to know exactly when they want to buy. Let's say you bought one month ago, you would be 25% down. So if you bought here June 21st, June 22nd, to something, June 23rd here, almost 50 cents, you would have had quite a lot less than you could have right now. So to put it into perspective here, if you were to buy $1,000 worth of XRP and it's 50 cent per piece, you know that you can only have 2,000 XRP. If you are doing it now that it's at 33 cents, you can have per $1,000, you know, uh, 1,000 XRP extra. So just to put it into perspective here, right now it's 3,000 XRP for $1,000. And of course, if it's 50 cents for every dollar, you have two XRP. So that counts up to 2,000. It's a lot of difference because let's say that XRP price ever goes to 10 bucks a piece, right? Then you're having 1,000 times 10 bucks is $10,000. Uh, in difference right there, which is quite significant. And when we're talking about bigger numbers here, let's say you have a $10,000 paycheck, uh, then it's the difference between 20,000 and 30,000 XRP, right? If I'm mistaken, make sure you correct me in the comment section down below. Sometimes when you're recording, you seem to derp up, it just happens sometimes, but in my mind, this sounds quite clear. So when people sometimes in the stock market, even me personally say that, Timing the market doesn't work too well. With cryptos, it can definitely work out very, very well. And in this case, timing the market is not a bad thing because most of the time, we're going quite a significant amount lower, right? So when we were at 48 cents, almost all of us expected the price to go down further if it was not sustained. It did. Right now, it's at around 30, uh, 29 to... 33 cents it's another great area in my opinion to buy some more and some other person might say oh it's gonna go down even lower than this well sure it might 
but at least try to layer your buys and accumulate here because it's a good price in my opinion because you've already made quite a big profit over the last month here because if you would have bought a month ago you would have been quite a significant amount down so if you're buying it right this second right now you're actually doing yourself a huge favor you're having so much more xrp so much more worth for your money and now another thing to, to, to quickly put into your mind there is that this might all not seem like the biggest deal since it is not um, if you invest $1,000 right now or 1010 in five years, if XRP goes as well as we expect it to be, it's not going to matter too much, right? But every single penny that we can scrape right now, right? That, that's also why there's one saying like that. Every dollar you can save right now might be $10 next year. You know, and a few saying like that are, are also being created for XRP that every dollar that you put into it right now and every dollar that you can save by, by looking at a cheaper price might translate to ten dollars in the future you know in let's say a couple of years here or whatever we're, we're talking about and if you you start to think about that in a literal form it's so easy in, in my opinion at least to to save up money and to really put as much as in as i can lose at least as i as i want to and also to look for better buy opportunities now the reason i keep on telling you to layer and to not worry too much about finding the right price for you is because of the layering strategy that you can call whatever you want. You can call it um, many, many things, but I will always recommend y'all to do that. There's a very good and a very bad side to layering though. So to quickly explain to y'all, the bad side to layering is that if you know you, you have $5,000 and you decide to go at 50, 45, 40, uh, 37, 35, 32, right? You decide to buy at all those points as an example. That's where you decided to buy. You keep putting in like, let's say 800 bucks every time. It could be that the price just goes to 46, right? Leaving you with one buy trigger at 50 and then spike up to $50 per XRP, right? In that point, you only invested 800 XRP instead of the full 5,000 that you actually wanted to invest. That's the bad part. The good part about it though is that you can actually win great percentages because your average price per XRP goes down the lower you buy and that's why we we'll always recommend layering. But if you don't care too much, right? If you don't care about this small 20% change in in value and you know, you're like, oh, you know, if it costs me 20% in a month, I'll just invest extra 20% next month, then don't worry too much about it. Invest as much as you want. You feel comfortable with losing and go with the flow. Now, guys, if you're liking this information or you think you're going to learn something or you've already learned something or you're enjoying this, make sure you press the like button because I got a lot of stuff to talk about here still. The reason behind this video and a lot of the videos that I make in a sort of same context are really to give you guys some some of the same mindset that I have with investing in these cryptocurrencies and why it's so simple for me to just leave it in there and not worry too much about the price, all right? Of course, we were all there, or a lot of us were there when it hit all-time high. You might be wondering, why not sell, right? That's because you cannot see the top. You don't know when the top is gonna get hit. You don't know when the bottom is going to get hit. And that's why I'll never tell you guys to go and look for the bottom. Never look for the lowest point as the chance of finding that is really quite small. I just suggest you guys to not put all your eggs into one basket at one point, but try to go over it in more days, more than one day, and, and see what small percentages you can achieve there, as most of the time it is beneficial, right? To make it simpler for yourself, make sure you understand technical analysis to the, the simplest bits, because big supports, big resistances might help you out with this game. Ripple XRP poised for more gains, prices rebound from Q1 support. Right now, and actually the last couple of days here, XRP has been one of the better performers in the market, which has put another round of faith in my decisions in the crypto market and just a whole way around. I'm just really convinced now XRP is, is on a good path here. A lot of people are hating on it, but I don't seem to care. Ripple XRP is up 2.6%. This is two days ago. Footprints in the Middle East and Southeast Asia highlight Ripple's advantages. Swift is dominant, but Ripple's progress is noticeable. Even though most of their partners are Usix current, clarity in the future will ease their transition to XRapid. That will drive demand for XRP and therefore prices above the current 20 cents consolidation. One thing we must take notice of though is that there's no net increase in demand whenever XRapid gets utilized. That's still 100% um, my opinion, though I do think that 
the more people partner up with XCurrent, us knowing that this could in the future transition to XRapid, which could into the future mean a very big use case and a lot of popularity for XRP, I, I can understand why the prices might increase because of it. But understand though that there's no net increase in demand nor supply as these transactions take a couple of seconds and they're being bought and sold, meaning no netto increase right there. Net, I think is the English word, right? So here is a little bit more about SWIFT and really Ripple analysis because that was quite useful right now. Theoretically, Ripple should be perfect option since their solutions are speedy, secure, and above inexpensive. But that's not the case. Regardless, there is progress. Presently, presently, Ripple has a foothold in Southeast Asia with Yoshitaka Kitao, um, SBI Group hellbent on seeing Ripple succeed. In the Middle East, the Saudi Arabia Monetary Authority, the SMA, SAMA, following their successful piloting of XCurrent is promoting Ripple solutions to local banks. Similarly, banks in Kuwait are interested with some already using XRapid. And more so talking about the prices right here. This is again quite important if you're looking into uh, layering your buys, looking at where to buy more. What I would recommend you all to just quickly check out, right, is really where do most people draw their support lines? Once you start to understand what a support line is, how it works, you can try to see at which point you should buy to be safe, right, in the safest position you could be at, but also so you still get the most amount of XRP possible in given time frame. Let's say, for example, they drew a, or at least we're seeing here, that there's a lot of support, right? We've not broken this barrier here, which is at around 30 cents. I think it's a little bit lower. You can see it's like 29, 127 just above, just above 29 cents ish. We've not been under there for a very long time. Now, you could be thinking two things, and I want y'all to comment down below what you're thinking. Should, um, if I'm gonna do, you know, a couple of buys, let's say six plus buys. I've already done three at the top here. You know, I bought uh, here, I bought here, I bought, let's say here, whatever. And I'm looking to go for another one. I'm looking to buy another one. Am I going to put my, my buy right above the support or right below the support? Which one would you do and why? Let me know in the comment section down below right now. So my opinion on this would actually be to make sure I have at least one buy above it. That's why I said six, because then you still have one or two left afterwards, um, at least for your plan. I make sure I buy a little bit just above the support, meaning that if we breach through the support, I have another chance to buy later. But if we actually bounce back and the support holds strong, we shoot back up to the moon instantly or whatever. At least I got as much XRP in as I really needed to. Because if you're buying here or here, it's not going to make, it's going to make a, you know, let's say 2% difference in, in, in price, right? And, and you can miss that. I don't think that's the most crucial thing you do. But this... These big markers can really play a big role in price movement and could also be a very big twist in you having 1,000 or 2,000 XRP when your run starts. So make sure you understand that. Try to time these these buys so you're not missing out on bigger runs. Uh, I, I think that's really something to, to think about. And also, Rem, Rem Crypto here replied to one of my videos from a, a while ago. He said, bro... Why people don't see this? BTC current price 10,600, all time high 20k, return 1.9 times. XRP current price 32 cents, all time high $3.84, return times 12 plus actual usage. Isn't 12 times return better than 1.9 return? So I liked it because I just saw it just now since the Twitter updated here. I don't know when this happened. I, I just opened Twitter for the first time in a couple of weeks. Really kind of crazy. But I just noticed that uh, he sent me this tweet and that a lot of people are of the same opinion. But there's a few crucial things that people might be forgetting. I want to point them out. First of all, Bitcoin is most of the time the big runner of any crypto run. So what happens very often is that Bitcoin starts to really run up. Let's say right now a bull run, you know, a small bull run or, or big one continues or starts to run. It could be that Bitcoin is the first one at $20,000 before any of these altcoins actually start to move whatsoever. So Bitcoin is already 20K. These altcoins are still doing, you know, 0% every day as an example. And Bitcoin is plus 140 or 110. Doesn't really matter. You guys get the idea. Well, 
What a lot of us traders are going to do then, once Bitcoin starts to run, is really put a lot of the odds that we're, we're, we might be holding right now for some good faith into BTC because, of course, it initiates the run and it's going to run up first, the hardest. And once we see BTC start to fatigue or a lot of the altcoins start to really get back up, you know, we, we start to see some movement in altcoins, we take that gains, those gains from BTC that we already established into cryptos, into altcoins um, that are not BTC, of course. And we start to get double gains because we already had BTC gains. And on those BTC gains, we now also have altcoin gains, which is sort of a plus plus situation. So when I saw this tweet, I'm like, it's pretty logical that XRP has, of course, a better return. It is also because XRP is way lower on the list. It's only two spots, but relatively it is like, as an example here, it's 12 times smaller or however many times is, is in beneath here, maybe 14 times smaller than Bitcoin is in terms of size and, and market cap here. So you should also keep that in the back of your head that XRP is just a smaller coin. If you're going to look at it from a different perspective, right, there's a lot of coins here that are even way lower. Uh, I don't have one to, to name it right now, but if you go look, you'll find one that is way lower that is actually down 99.999% down from its all-time high. You could also be saying like, oh, but why not invest in that crypto? It's because it's really also about where you see fit, where you see the the, le the least risk for yourself, where you, you see the highest chance of it really reaching that top once more. And also, you got to feel the project. You, you, you guys hopefully understand what I'm trying to say with that is it, it's not all about this time's return. It could also be that BTC, uh, that all-time high, that it has nothing to do with any of the situations anymore, right? What if BTC goes times 12, XRP goes times 12, you know? I, I don't see the importance of, of this, but... I see, I see what he means, and I think a lot more people are of that opinion, so I thought I should quickly address it. Barry Silbert is super bullish on Ripple and reveals his view on XRP. So Barry Silbert, founder and CEO of Galaxy Digital Capital, has finally responded why he doesn't include XRP into his discussion while including other digital assets. So this, of course, was about the mining situation here. While discussing on how will crypto mining be employed by the U.S. and other governments on Twitter, Barry Silbert talked about a few privacy-focused coins. Uh, he states that Zen, Zek, and LPT might be used by government folks shortly. Further, as a response to a user's comment that asked, How come you never mention XRP but mention other assets instead? Mr. Silbert responded saying he is super bullish on the company, Ripple, and it is a Grayscale's... Wait, and it is a Grayscale's one of the investment. Okay, that's a very weird sentence. They're just trying to say like Barry Gilbert, Silbert here, CEO of, of Grayscale and some other bigger companies here. He's a very, very fortunate and very hardworking, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, man. Um, very fortunate, so to speak. He has a lot of big companies and he's very bullish on Ripple. It's one of their main investments is what he says or one of their bigger investments. He quickly adds that for now, he's neutral on XP token. Because C3 Nick on Twitter asked, I'm re really interested to know why you never mention XRP anywhere. Even though you're really interested and invested into Ripple itself and also offer investment products involving XRP, how come you never mention it but mention other assets instead? And he replies, Ripple the company is our largest investment. XRP is not on our conviction list of holdings between brackets yet or between parentheses. Super bullish on the company, neutral on the token as of now. It's an important thing that we, we saw this as it's good for him to say yet. And it's also good that they, you know, do not have importance with, with XRP being involved with Ripple, right? There could be a lot of manipulating going on there. So I'm thinking this is really a smart answer for him uh, for right at the, at the moment here. I think this was the best response he could have given since he shows us, hey, we're really positive with Ripple. But with XRP, it's not on our holdings list yet. And I think that's smart because otherwise people would have try to put more security threads on it. I don't really know how yet, but they most likely would have tried. They would have tried to pin something on them again. So even if they're having it, I think it's smart for him to, to, to release something like this to the public. Ripple Labs made 533.7 million dumping XRP in 2018. Token still down 82% from Anya van Osterhout. Osterhout. Ripple hits 19-month low. Here come the XP army. Could things be looking up? <sighs> A new study reveals that Ripple Labs has made more than half a billion dollars during the 2018 bear market by dumping pre-mined XRP tokens onto investors. Wow. 
interesting, right? That's very interesting, and I don't want to go over this since it is a uh, a little bit of a sketchy situation here, and it's it's really both sides of of the party um, that we can can talk about here. But I do want to mention that this article is out there, and that some of you guys that are interested in it should read it. If you're finding something useful in there, you know, you let me know. If you don't, then welcome to the club. That's basically it. You, it's really hard to find out what is true, what is not true, what is important, uh, what y'all should know, what is insignificant, what is taken out of context, and I, I just don't want to make any words foul on that since I, I don't give, I can't give you guys all the best information on that. Sorry. XRP outperforms BTC Ethereum records the most records the most number of transactions in the last 24 hours. That's again pretty good, right? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty neat. So as you can see here on the transaction sheet, transactions in the last 24 hours consisted of 49.1% XRP. That's insane. All right, that was insane. How much that is? It was like. 1.11 million is what they're saying right here. And it peaked at 1.12, 1.21 million or 22 million. Damn. All right. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of transactions already. That's crazy. But again, it shows that they're winning, guys. It shows that they're winning. Wow. Am I, am I excited about all of this, man? I, I just, I, I can't even. So Tron's Justin Sun invites eToro founder to lunch with Buffett. This is, again, away from XRP stuff. I got three articles here. Oh, wait, this one actually does contain some XRP. But uh, I, I think we'll still get that in another video since I do have one Libra video planned. I don't know if we'll do it today or tomorrow, though. But Tron's Justin Sun invites eToro founder to lunch with Buffett. This just happened. There are only four days left until trial fighter Justin Sun's launch with Warren Buffett and Sun has handed out another golden ticket. The lucky winner, Yoni Asiya, founder and CEO of eToro. He wrote, I'd like to invite my good friend Yoni Asiya, founder and CEO of eToro, to join my lunch with Warren Buffett four days ago. Oh, I thought four days ago. I was like, what? Four days to go and more friends to be announced. And the message sent on Sunday afternoon, quickly received an apply. Yoni said, Justin, it is my honor to join you for launch with Warren Buffett, a big step for bridging between the traditional finance world and the new one. There is a huge opportunity to use blockchain for good and happy to share our research on the good dollar with the Oracle from Omaha. And that's basically his answer. So I'm wondering how they're going to be doing this. Like, does Justin have a, a bigger agenda here? Like, do they all have to pay, uh, you know, 900000 as an example, all of them to sit at the table as well? Do they have to pay a million or or is it just because Justin wants it to be, you know, a bigger event than it has ever been before? You know, what are his intentions? Why are these partners? What is he thinking? It's very interesting how this is all going. Also for Yoni, if he would have declined this, you know, if any actually, anybody in the world declines this, I think it would be the, the biggest mistake of anybody's life. This would most likely be the most important meeting of a lifetime and actually the whole of crypto is right now waiting for what's going to happen at this day. You might not believe me, but Warren Buffett has a lot of influence in the investment realm. If these guys, you know, a group of the biggest developers, I don't want to say, you know, biggest influencers sort of in cryptocurrency and finance as well, can convince Warren Buffett to like blockchain or cryptocurrency, we might just see another major run right there. One of the richest people on earth, one of the best investors ever, to like cryptocurrency, to really say instead of Bitcoin is rat poison square to, you guys are right, I love this, Bitcoin is the future. Oh my days, could it be a crazy, crazy day right there. Damn, alright, so, again, that's, that's what I'm going to be waiting for here, a couple of days, but I just wanted to have some more XRP for if this happens soon. Binance, the leading exchange platform by market volume, yesterday announced a 9.5 million XLM, um, and the option is now offer staking on the platform that's actually what i quickly wanted to say they're having a nice little reward once more nearly a year ago binance began offering xlm on their platform and as a result began earning monthly xlm rewards for doing so according to the platform this was inadvertently done and now they have 9.5 million xlm in their hands with such a substantial sum available to them the decision was made to award the coins to their community of users and now there's staking pretty cool right Pretty damn cool. 
uh, and yeah, the, the staking is is how staking works. Basically, it's it's not anything new whatsoever. But it's pretty cool that Binance is actually doing a little giveaway for the people to give back, and I'm totally happy about that. But guys, that was it for this video. Again, if you enjoyed, make sure you press the like button on this video right now. And make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any further videos. Make sure you also follow my second channel. It's called Dusty. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. My handle on Twitter is the TheDustyBC. You guys know it. So make sure you check it out as well. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody. Don't forget to give away.